in, um, in studying our topic today, just take me there. You know, we kept, uh, we've been going through this. And, uh, I mean, you will experience that uh, I will, I will. And so I'm encouraging all of us, uh, listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen, I mean, uh, it, doesn't ma- it doesn't mean that because I'm the one preaching here that you cannot, you, you can, you're welcome to tell me, Pastor, I, I, I have a word. I want to say something or I have a song I want to sing. Whatever, you know, I mean, for as long as you know it's in order and as you say it to me or tell me or Myra or Sister Lilita or any one of those in leadership, I mean, uh, we will just put this in order when it's right there, you know. And, um, but let us not um, grieve, that's the other word, grieve the Holy Spirit. And, and, and prevent us from uh, enjoying and experiencing really what God is, is, is giving us. Because he is speaking to us all the time. All right? And uh, as a congregation, when we gather like this, I mean, the anointing is so much different. And the giftings of God is so much more alive. So the importance of everyone functioning and doing their part. You know, um, you don't want to die inside of you because you failed or you're whatever reason afraid or hesitant or you're not confident. No, just just get up there and just ask the you know just ask the Holy Spirit help me. I mean, I have little faith, but uh, it's not my little faith that is important, but it's your big faith that I'm holding on to. So that's kind of and so in studying the. Uh, anointing and and uh, we will we will in in the se- series of the anointing and Antichrist spirit we will go into the gifts we will again you know study that and you know uh, help each and everyone to function in the giftings to which God has has given you but definitely you have you you already have the gifts of tongues and you already have you can prophesy I mean. There's miracles, there's signs and wonders, you know, already in us. That's why we have, you know, we're activating the healing ministry. I mean, and that's not just for me. It's for all of us. I'm, I'm surprised I'm not seeing your sick people, friends or relatives. They're not here, they, they, you know, because it's for that purpose. And hopefully uh, even the unbelievers, you know, as long as they're sick, bring them over and we will pray. And that's another way of bringing souls into the kingdom of God. All right. So, okay, now we go back understanding. Uh, this, this series really is, you know, on wait, uh, wait until you are filled with power from on high. And we've kind of looked into that. We've kind of allowed ourselves to understand why, why, why was Jesus so insistent on this? Why? Um, uh, we saw the demonstration of Acts 2 on how, you know, I mean, Peter, a few a few days ago or a few weeks ago, I mean, he was just this terrified guy who could not even claim, you know, uh, association with Jesus because of what he saw. He was terrified of what that was being done to Jesus. And so he denied him and all, whatever the reason might have been. And we saw that that's there to confront us when difficulty happens. And so... Wow, God really has such a great plan for us that, you know, he said, okay, wait until you're filled with power from on high. Jesus insists you wait until you're filled with power from on high. I mean, 10 days. I mean, actually, you know, they probably didn't even know that it was only 10 days, but I really believe that it was, it was more the obedience and, uh, and the yieldedness of the 120 that really opened the heavens and activated, accelerated the outpouring of the Holy Spirit as uh, was declared in Joel 2.28, you know, going forward. We need, we need the help of the Holy Spirit. And then in, in studying John 13 to John 17, and we will still go there, uh, here and there. But, you know, you begin to see the, uh, the uh, expediency. Jesus kept saying, it is to your advantage that I go. I know you're melancholy. I know you're sudden that I'm not here physically, but I will be here. You know, while I was studying for, for today's message, I mean, I was looking at, you know, Moses uh, many times uh, uh, encountered God face to face, talks to God face to face, face to face. All right. And I've always said, I want to talk to you face to face. 
And really in the old Hebrew word, that means uh, mouth to mouth. It's a mouth to mouth. And that reminds us, those of you who are in the medical field, mouth to mouth resuscitation. I mean, when he speaks, he breathes on you and your life comes to you. Right. But on the flip side, as a born again believer and filled with the Holy Spirit, he is in us. We're not just talking to him face to face or mouth to mouth. He lives in you. <laughs> and that, you know, just whew, brings it into another level, uh, another paradigm. He lives in you. And, you know, every day, I mean, he lives in you. He is in you. That's why Jesus said, you know, and the Holy Spirit will remain in you. And because he remains in you, you will have a peace that the world cannot comprehend. And Paul continued to say that in Philippians, the peace of God which surpasses, in other words, oh, it's beyond comprehension, beyond understanding, because it is a peace that settles in you, that makes you confident that, you know, no matter what happens, even, you know, martyrdom comes upon you as, as another exit to life. I mean, you're not afraid because it's just a second and moment when I will be face to face with my Lord, my Savior, enter into a life that is, wow. This is what I've been praying for. This is what I've been longing for. This is the reason why I was saved, so that I may live in eternity forever and ever. Amen. So, um, you know, what, what, what we're doing, I've been doing a, you know, I've been, I don't want to just keep focusing and teaching on the Antichrist spirit and those all spirit. I don't want us to be overwhelmed by that, but I want us to have an understanding because understanding your enemy is the best way to win. Ignorance of the tactics and the characters and characteristics and, you know, expression of your enemy is what, uh, you know, uh, falsely puts us in a comfortable comfort zone, you know. And, um, but at the same time, I'd like for us to see why, why is this demons, why are these demons so aggravated with you? Why does he hate you, Ted? Why does he hate us? Why did he? Why does he? Did he hate Jesus? Why? Why? Why did all of that? I mean, why? Why the hating the Israelites? Why is this so much hate? Because he envies us. Have you ever thought about that? Going back to Genesis, I mean, what? So let's take a look, and I, I will just go to. Uh, this place, Ephesians 1, 19, and I'm not, J Jeremy, we're not good, really going to go through all of it, you know, but the, several, what I've done is, because, you know, I, I don't know about you, but, you know, it, uh, I welcome, I, I invite you to do this every time, because I'm just, this just gripped me. I mean, I know this for a while. I mean, we, we pray this all the time, but as I say, you know, there's anointing for seasons and timings where God, you know, emphasizes something for the purpose of arriving at something, at some place. And for our purposes, we're looking at, you know, last time we were talking about contending for the ultimate power of the Holy Spirit. I mean, we, we want to understand that. We want to understand what is in us. What is this power that is within us, that is in Christ Jesus? I mean, and then why, why is the Antichrist spirit still persists? We're still adulterates us with their spirit, with their you know, influence. Why is that happening? And I know we know some of the answer, but I'd like for us to pick it up from the point of view that we're talking about the anointing and the Antichrist spirit. All right. Look at this, Ephesians 1. Actually, our title is Surpassing Greatness of the, the Surpassing Greatness of His Power. The power within us is surpassing. In another translation, it says, immeasurable greatness of his power. Can you imagine that? Just, you know, I'm not, I'm not just wanting us to do a play on words, but I want us to see uh, that definition. Immeasurable. What is that? And, you know, it, when we study, when we meditate, take a look at what the word is saying. What does that mean? What is that, you know, what does that mean to you, to me? What kind of power is resident in you? 
Take me to that, uh, th- that scripture again. In the New King James Version, you know, we pray this all the time, Ephesians 1.19. But I want for us to zero in on here so that we know, uh, I, I just, uh, again, I, I, I finished the book of um, um, Michael, Dr. Michael Brown on, I'm not afraid of the Antichrist. It was really so funny and so powerful. And I had to reread it again. You know how many times I uh, sometimes have to read one other book because of its topic. And, um, and then I'm going back to like I have again. I mean, you know, I've studied this in the 80s, late 80s. Uh, this is uh, one of the first books of uh, Rick Joyner. And I'm beginning to see it again from a different perspective, from this level of my maturity and from this level of my understanding and from this level of my calling. Because, you know, you, you grow. And so your understanding, your perception becomes so much more better. You know, that's, that's a wrong adverb. So anyways, uh, so Ephesians 1.19 really is, you know, uh, wh- and what is the exceeding greatness? Uh, bring me to the first one. Bring me to verse 17 or, or 15, actually. Why, why is this? You know, I'm, we're zeroing on this because I want us to see that the Antichrist spirits really, you know, have no match to the spirit of God inside of us. But we need to know it. And we need to allow it to be activated inside of us. Here's the prayer of Paul. And we continue to pray this. Why? Because we need for our eyes to be open. We need to see beyond our natural perspective. We need to see beyond what we saw yesterday. Today, that seeing must be brand new, must be fresh, must, more, must be more penetrating, and must, must be more far-reaching, and must be, more, must be higher in its dimension. Because like we, we, we just, some of you read earlier, I mean, there's a manifold, there's many dimensions in God's power, in God's presentation, and in God's expression, His manifestation to us. And we need to see that. And we can't do that. I don't care if you had a doctorate's degree 20 times over in your own cerebral. You cannot comprehend the things of God. And on the flip side, you may be an illiterate. You didn't even go to school. And yet, you know, the presence of God will activate the holiness of God inside of you. And you will be able to astound people in interpreting things and in speaking of things and in doing things that nobody has heard because the Spirit of God is operating inside of you and that's beyond every, every educational attainment that your cerebral can ever <laughs> attain to. Amen? And I'm saying that because we're coming against a spirit that is now here and will become a person. If he's coming, if Jesus is coming soon, then that person is already alive and that person is already getting ready to, you know, present himself as the Antichrist person. He's here. But uh, in this, at this moment, we deal with the spirits. All right. So I, I want us to go back here. He, here, Paul. Paul saw this as very, very important. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord, it doesn't mean that because you have the faith that, you know, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be scot-free. You're going to just, you know, go do a home run of victory. No, the more faith you exercise, the more obedience you do, the more, the more holiness you walk into, the more you get closer to God, the more in danger you are because you're a target. You're in the spotlight. And then, you know, you go, I mean, I got to think, well, that's not fair, God. I mean, you know, the closer I am to you, the, the better I should be, uh, the more protection I should be. And yes, you do. But you're still under attack. I mean, the assignment of great, uh, bigger, bigger general Antichrist spirits is going to be assigned to you. Because the thief only comes. And he comes. But to steal, kill, and destroy all right. So here, I mean, I believe this is this is what he's doing. I mean, I, after I heard of your faith in the Lord and your love for all the saints, those are very those are confrontative to towards evil, towards darkness, towards the work of the devil. So I do not cease to pray for you because of your attitude of faith and love for the saints. And, and, and so I make mention of you in my prayer. Next, verse 16. 
uh, and this is my prayer, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. This is what we need, especially in this hour, in the end times. We need the wisdom of God because when you deploy, when you do things, it's got to be the wisdom. And, you know, what, what revelation you get must be uh, partnered with wisdom because uh, many times, you, you you know, that revelation does not come up to you in, in depth of understanding, but the wisdom will help us how to deploy it, how to use it, how to um, exercise it, and how to be activated in it. What? Uh, what is this wisdom and revelation for? The knowledge of Him. See, we need to see the knowledge of Him. I was, you know, part of... Uh, I was studying for our 150 and uh, for the uh, um, first day of our uh, discipleship training. And, uh, you know, you begin to see, oh, my goodness, I think, why, why do we need to have this right view of who God is? You know why? Because one of the things that we will discover in the end times is that he's going to allow tribulation to happen to us. And if you don't know and have no intimate relationship with God and no confidence and trust in the leadership of Jesus Christ, I mean, we will be offended in him. You remember the four things that, uh, uh, you know, uh, reason four, four, four reasons why we need to study, understand, and appreciate the studying the end times is because, number one, there will be massive fear. There will be massive deception, uh, what is it, fold, F -O -O -O, uh, offense, and uh, what is the next one? Huh? L, lust. And lust does not mean, you know, you're, you're having sex with people. No. Lust there is yielding to what you like, to your own passion. That's, that's what, what that means. Uh, whatever you decide you want to do it, that's lust. And uh, deception. Those four things, and the acronym is spells F-O-L-D, which means fold, the goal of the devil, the goal of ignorance of the signs of the times and appreciating, understanding the end times is that you fold, meaning you fail, you flip, you're imbalanced, all right? So just going there. So, and, and that's why, I, you know, the more I see that, the more we get deeper into these studies, um, you know, wh wh why, why, why revelation? And if you see, you know, wisdom is, you know, starts with W and revelation starts with an R and it spells war. This is what we use to war against ignorance, against catatonic lifestyle, against lukewarmness, against confusion, against slothfulness, against the works of Antichrist spirit, religious spirit, all right? And so what? For what? The, the, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. In other words, ah, let the light of God come upon you, illumine you, give you, give you the wherewithal. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you have experienced, you know, one, once upon a time you read these uh, phrases here, these scriptures here, and all of a sudden uh, one day you read it again and who? I mean, you just, wow, where did this scripture come from? You know, all of a sudden you have an, an understanding. You have a, who like it stood up before you and talked to you and explained things to you. And that's, that's this prayer is all about. Uh, so that, that uh, for what your eyes is open your eyes is illumined that you may know. You may have an experience. You experience God. You experience the things of God. That's very intimate. Uh, you experience what is the hope of his calling. Understand what did he call you to do? What are you called to? We have an aggregate calling as a corporate body, as forerunners, as carrying this message of the end times and uh, the cry of the bride. And, and then we have individual, you know, uh, callings that must be activated in us. And, and uh, that's, that's why we need to, for our eyes to be open. We have to be enlightened, okay? 
And then here is where really, you know, and then the other thing is, what are the riches? We need to understand what are the riches of the glory? We have an inheritance in Christ. Uh, and it's resident in all of us as saints. That's why we cannot not be activated individually and corporately because every one of you is a gift and you have a gift that must be translated in you and activated in you for the purpose of all of us being, uh, being uh, uh, served and being enriched and being encouraged. And so that all of these giftings in here can translate to other people, to other places. We carry that message and, and, and that's the, the inheritance of Jesus in the saints. You cannot find that anywhere else except to believers. All right, so we need to discover what is the riches of this inheritance? What did I inherit? All right, next. And here's verse 19. Uh, for us to understand what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Look at that. All kinds of power right there. Exceeding. In other words, wow, this is so powerful, greatness. And give me, give me my, the, the, new, the other translation. I pray, look at the TPT translation, I pray that you continually, it's not uh, just one trickle or two, three, it is a continuous flow, a continuous experiencing of God, the immeasurable greatness. I mean, you know, this is a good place also for us to really, you know, sharpen our English, our words, our graphics, immeasurable what is that? That's in you. Maybe you can't define what it is, but I'm telling you, an immeasurable greatness of God's power is made available to you through faith. It's in you. That's why you cannot sit there and be in default not to say something because that immeasurable greatness is in you. It's operative in you. It's probably boiling inside of you and you're grieving the Holy Spirit because you're afraid. Whatever your reason may be, it is no reason at all to grieve the Holy Spirit and deny yourself the expression of God's inheritance in you, which is immeasurable greatness of God's power. That's why a lot of people, when you pray for them, and they're so sick, they're not getting healed. Why? Because you're not allowing the immeasurable greatness of God's power to flow through you because of your hesitation or your, uh, your feeling like, you know, but I cannot. Of course you cannot heal this guy. But Christ in you, that immeasurable greatness in you can melt that cancer in the body of this man or this woman can be set free. Not by you, but by the immeasurable greatness or unsurpassing greatness of this power of God that is resident inside of you. That's what we got. Can you imagine suppressing that? Can you imagine preventing that power that has been freely given to us? I remember one of the books uh, and testimony of John G. Lake I mean, uh, there was a bubonic plague in Africa at one time, and um, a lot of people died. A lot of people died, you know, just like during COVID. And uh, evidently him, John G. Lake, and another two other guys in his team was, um, was met by uh, the medical people who came in to assess uh, uh, the plague, and they were shocked that uh, these this few people were still alive. And so John G. Lake gave him a demonstration and a preaching, actually. And uh, what he did was took the, the, the virus in the mouth of the dead person and put it in his hand and submitted his hand into a microscope. And the minute that uh, the, the microbe was placed into his hands, you will see that they saw that in the microscope immediately the virus died because greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world because the life of God is in. The only thing that separates us from, from the life of God 
re- being released is the skin of our hands. That's why when you touch, when you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover because the life of God, the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith is released right there. And so, you know, when I asked myself, so why, why are some people not healed? Why are some people, you know, because you're not believing. The reluctance, the hesitation, the overthinking, rather than allowing yourself to flow in this. And so I felt like, you know, okay, we're studying the Antichrist period. Let's study the empowerment of God in us that will counter and that will overwhelm and fight and come against uh, the work of the Antichrist spirit. And we can no longer be ignorant of this power. So this is part of understanding is your, the hope of your calling. Number two is, you know, the inheritance that is in the saints. What is that? And number three, what kind of power is in the employment of that inheritance? What kind of power is in us in the deployment of our calling? Here, immeasurable. Experience continually by flowing in the Holy Spirit, by allowing Holy Spirit to really help us and, and we move and yield in the Holy Spirit. We continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. It's through faith. It's, I don't care if you, you know, have all of this medical degree. It's not through your medical degree that they will be released from sickness and disease. It is through the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. Because you have this relationship with God. And God has given you this inheritance. That's why Jesus was so free. He says, you know, greater works than this you will do because I'm going to the Father. Because you're no longer just like him. I mean, he was operating by himself. Now, you know, this aggregate immeasurable power. Can you imagine the explosion of that immeasurable in you, Rendu? In you, Patricia, in you. I mean, for all of this little company of people. But the immeasurable power of God through us is released through faith. And whoa, can you imagine? This whole area of South Bay uh, is going to explode with the glory of God, with healings, with miracles, signs and wonders. Because we allow ourselves to continually experience the immeasurable greatness, the surpassing greatness of God's power. And it's made available for us. What are we waiting for? What's your problem? What's our problem? It's ours. Why are we negating this? I'm sure if you won a lotto, you know, the lot, I mean, you, everybody will know that you have this uh, great money coming to you. But why can we not tell the world that we have this immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to us so that I will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I will cast out demons and they have to flee. If I accidentally touch anything dangerous or poisonous, I will not in any way be harmed. And when I lay hands on the sick, they. Actually, there's another thing there. I will speak with new tongues. That's in Mark 15, Mark 16, verse 15. And I was just, this is all I was studying actually this, you know, this weekend. And uh, then your lives will be what? Everybody say with me. Then your lives will be what? Advertisement. power as it works through you. This is the mighty power. Think about that. You have to park here. You have to eat this. You have to let every word come alive. You mean me? I've got that? Whoa! Even Jesus in 1 John 3, 8 says, you know, the reason why the Son of God was made manifest was so that he might destroy and undo the works of the devil in the amplified look look at what the amplified says about that i mean and he is manifest in us we need to make him let him be manifest in us but he who commits sin okay so identify that who practices evil doing is of the devil that's a given right takes his character from the evil one for the devil has sinned violated the divine law from the beginning 
Now, now the difference is now on the flip side, the reason the Son of God was made visible so that he has to be manifested was to undo. What does that mean? Destroy. Loosen. You know, if you're in captivity, if you're being handcuffed by the enemy, you'll be loosened by the presence of God, by the presence of Jesus, and dissolve. Dissolve. Can you imagine? I, I just see, you know, you pray for the sick with cancer. I mean, that cancer dissolves. That cancer loosens its attachment in the uterus, in the breast, and wherever it might have fastened itself and destroy the ability of that cancer, of that sickness to debilitate and to make miserable someone's life. Do you see this? And he's doing this to do what? The works the devil has done. This is the reason. I am come to give you life and give it more abundantly till it overflows. That life is, is his life, his resurrected life. That life is the life of God. Can you imagine the life of God in you? How dare you belittle the life of God in you and not give it expression? Do you guys understand what I'm saying? That's why I, 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 I cannot be content. Okay, I have all of this prayer on Monday. Oh, I have this prayer on Saturday. Oh, I, I'm, I'm putting all of this, you know, uh, whatever. Mm, yeah, great. Hey, I'm happy. I'm really happy. I'm really, I mean, true, truly, I'm happy. Because those are, you know, measure of, of growth, of maturity. But that's not enough. All that put together, it, it will not will not weather the weather for us when the storm comes. We need more than that. We need an actualization of that. We need the reality of that in our individual lives, not just from your cerebral, from the mental ascent, you know, from, you know, okay, I know I'm close, you know, I'm close to, to Angelo, but it doesn't, you know, I'm not in him. I'm just close. Has to be in you. No matter what happens, they turn you upside down and right side up. I mean, you know, you know that you know that you know that you know, and no one can persuade you otherwise. No one can make you silent sitting in the pew because you're full of the energy of God. You're full of the word of God, and you know that this word is going to liberate someone in the pulpit, in, in the congregation, or someone, you know, watching online. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? That's why I'm kind of, oh, no, we can't do this. I, I mean, I, you know, uh, utang na loob. I mean, you have one liner. I, that's not my utang na loob on you. I mean, you have this praise report. <laughs> that's not utang na loob sa Diyos. No, 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 no. That is an insult. Dapat lang you have one word, one liner. Dapat lang you have a praise report. God doesn't owe us anything because we're expected to have that. We have to have words. We have to have utterance. We are the expression of God in the midst of us. And that's why the Antichrist spirit is able to manipulate a lot of believers because with the little thing that they think they know, with the little belief that they believe, and with the little jigamaror, you know, programs and, and events that they do, they think they've got it. No, you haven't got it. You're deceived. You're double-minded, hypocrite. And so this Antichrist spirit will just manipulate you. Amen. Go back and, and, and go to that. Yeah. Go to the Amplified Version of uh, Ephesians 1.19. Take a look at this. I mean, we're not going to go there, but I want you to, to take hold of the notes and, and I want you to really go and meditate on this one verse. Okay, Ephesians 1.19 in the Amplified Version. Take a look. And so that you can know the, the, the prayer, the wisdom and, and the revelation is so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited, oh my goodness, and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength. 
Wow. You study your English, right? I mean, you know, adverb upon adverb upon adverb. Whoa. That's what's in us. That's why 1 John 4, 4 can very easily say, greater is he that's within you than he that is in the world. That's why no weapon formed against you can prosper because you are right with God. Weapons are being formed against us, but the thing is it cannot prosper because greater is he that's within us than he that's in the world. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's why, you know, it really just, you know, if you want me to really cry and be irritated is when people devalue God and he belittles God does not give the respect to him. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure, uh, you know, whoever is doing that does not, does not mean it. But that's the thing. Why are you not meaning it? Are you dead? I mean, you know, why are you not meaning it? Are you calloused? Yeah, maybe. Why are we not meaning to honor God? I mean, some of us here, we're, I've been saved now for, what, 43 years? I mean, I, I better walk right with God. I better know what he's saying. And even if, actually, I mean, um, most preachers are saying, you know, those that are, have been saved for one minute already has so much power in them from those who were just, you know, in the world. Because of, look, understand, no, you know, this is experience. The immeasurable, the unlimited, and surpassing greatness. I mean, all of those are adjectives, are what, adverbs? Are they all adverbs, everybody? In and for us who believe as demonstrated in the world. No wonder Jesus said, it is important. It is to your advantage that I leave because I'm, when I leave, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit, he will be your helper. He will not abandon you. You will not feel orphaned. You will not feel like, uh, you know, I've left you, but, you know, in my place, the Holy Spirit will do everything that I do to you. He is, in, you know, he's, he's, he's an allos, another one to help you. He'll remind you of what I told you. No wonder, you know, you, know, you remember uh, in Acts 2, I mean, all of a sudden, I mean, the bravery and the courage and the confidence on Peter standing there, the thousands of people listening to him preach the gospel, unafraid. Why? Because the empowerment of the Holy Spirit added to the power of the b- breath of God inside of him is already able to demonstrate this. Can you understand my irritation? I mean, it's a holy irritation, hopefully. You know, that, you know, you have no words. I can't believe it. For seven days, 24-7, you have the chat room for words. You put your words there. How can you have no word on Sunday? And the other thing really that I would like to stress for us is, you know, prophecy is what we need to, is what needs to be released right now. I don't want, it's not, I'm not talking about prophesying to you. Some of you, I mean, you know, you can't even forget what the prophecy to you uh, when you were at I Have Casey or to you. You know, why can't you, you know, express, uh, speak the prophecy of God to us, to them, to those that you will encounter? You know how important that is. It changed your life. It motivates you. But I am not about you prophesying to individuals more so, but prophesying what God is saying to the church, to the body. Because that kind of prophesying to individuals can be, can be taken, you know, out of context. But the prophesying, like some people say, Pastora, can you have, give me a prophecy? I said, listen to my preaching. That's a prophecy. Because I do not preach from my own thoughts. Preach as by the Spirit, led by the Spirit. Because you release prophecy. 
when we were uh, still in, um, in, yeah, Echo Park, I remember the few people who were sitting there and looking at me and going, falling asleep, and can we go already? Can you end now? Pa Francis, can we finish now? You know, uh, and I'm, I'm just preaching this thing that, you know, to me is, is so important. And the Spirit of God just says, never mind, just preach over them. Just release that word in the Spirit. It doesn't matter whether they're receiving it or not. They will receive it because my word is alive. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It will divide. It will, it will, you know, divide the intentions and purpose of the heart. My word is forever settled in heaven. My word is life and healing to all of their flesh. The flesh profits nothing, but my spirit, they are life and their spirit. I mean, so there's power in those words. And so, because can you imagine, you know, I'm so intent in, because, you know, my, my preachings are not, like you said, that they're not the, oh, you're so cute. Okay, okay, long, you know, it's not to placate. I'm just not that kind of preacher, because I'm a preacher from outer space. <laughs> and so, but, but, you know, so you can just imagine, I'm still a human being. I mean, I'm looking at people and half of them are falling asleep. Half of them is, you know, uh, putting their arms into their husband like they're in a movie theater watching television or watching movie and just not paying attention. It's not out there. Can you imagine the devil swallowing their minds, swallowing them uh, in the midst of, uh, you know, preaching that should be piercing their hearts? But, you know, I'm confident. The Holy Spirit said, just, just preach over them. But preach it in the heaven. Preach it in the spirit realm. Because he can, the Holy Spirit can take it and release it and do something with it. That's, that's the other difference. And so, uh, going, okay, so I'm going there. So, so what's the relevance of me talking about all of this in relationship to uh, anointing and the Antichrist spirit? Very relevant, isn't it? Can you, can you guess? Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm just stressing to us that there is this surpassing greatness of his power. And his power is in you, in us, as the bride of Jesus Christ. This is what really what will embolden us in times of difficulties, in times of sorrow, in times of loss, and in times of suffering. Because we will suffer. I mean, and, and I want you all all of us to brace up and just recognize that God will allow us to suffer because it is in that suffering that we will be able to enter into glory. Whatever Jesus went through, we will go through. And that's why it's important for us to understand what is this inheritance that is in this? What is the power of this inheritance that is in the saints? What is the power of this calling, of his calling in our lives? And what is the surpassing greatness of that power? And then next to that is that raised us up to get, and this, this surpassing greatness of his power is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. And raised him up together with us in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in heavenly places. We are so unreachable by the enemy. No wonder Dr. Michael Brown says, I'm not afraid of the Antichrist. He should be afraid of me. I mean, that's mine. He should be afraid of us. should be afraid of you. Because you have the surpassing greatness of his power inside of you. You inherited it. That's your inheritance. It belongs to you. You had nothing to do with it, but it was gifted to you. So according to Derek Prince, life is a battle. Not surprised, right? I mean, and the, the sooner we really grasp this, the sooner we understand that life is a battle, then the, the surer we are to win this battle. It's when we try to eclipse it, when we try to ignore it, when we, we, when we do not fight. It doesn't matter if you fight or don't fight. 
you will be warred against. You, there will, there's a battle that's going on, all right? So, so why is that? Why is there a battle? Why, why all the conflicts? Why all the struggles and strife and endless dispute? Why war? All right? Because we are a world full of rebels and rebellion. I mean, look at what's going on in, in Gaza, right? All the lies, all the, the double standard uh, news casting. Um, I was reading some of the statistics uh, of how many and how much um, goods and, and help and assistance and food was, was trucked into Gaza to help all of those that were displaced. And, you know, I mean, there's, there's thousands every day. And yet, you know, they keep talking about the hunger in Gaza. No, because they're not seeing. They just want to see what they want to see. They're just so blinded by their own kind of perception, their, their kind of hatred. And some of these people that are even going into all of this uh, uh, protest don't even know the story. That's the kind of world we are in. And it will not be less, it will not be better, it will be worse. And the only counter we have is the surpassing greatness of this power within us. We need to understand that. We need to take ownership of that. We need to walk in it. We cannot devalue what God has done and what God has given to us by acting weak and acting stupid and acting reluctant and acting hesitant all the time, afraid and fearful. Oh, what will they say to me? It doesn't matter what they say to you. What is God saying to you is what is important and you need to voice it out so that we may muffle the voice of the enemy. Amen? So re because we are a world of full of rebels and rebellion, and rebellion begun in heaven, not the heaven where God is, but somewhere in the mid heavens, the second, there are three heavens. The heaven that we see today is just the firmament. And then there's a second heaven where, 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 where all the warfare is resident. And then the third heaven where God is. And that's why we fight to go through the second heaven to reach the place where God is. That's why you can't just be cute, you know, while worshiping or while in church, or you can't, you, you'll never get past the second heaven. And the place where we connect with God is where he is. And that is not just proximity, but that is really, you know, a, a place and uh, a place in, in the spirit realm. So rebellion began in heaven, not the heavens where, you know, not from man. So not from man, so the, the rebellion did not come from man. It came from an archangel also called Satan, originally called Lucifer, all right? And uh, we will go there a little bit, but we will continue probably next, next week. So in the form of a serpent, he beguiled, he deceived Adam and Eve, the parents of the human race, to rebel against God. And, you know, he was, he, he, uh, in the old King James Version, it says the devil was so subtle. In other words, he was so nonchalant about it, just playing cute. Oh, did really God say that? You know? And just inject there the doubt, just inject there a, a disbelief and inject in there the thought, the tone of unbelief and distrust to and distrust in, in God. And see, if you don't know him, if you don't have that relationship with him, I mean, all the devil can do is, did really God say that? But, you know, you, you can also, you know, you should also be comfortable. I mean, you should, you know, I mean, that's so strict. I mean, your pastor is so strict and doing all this and, and requiring all that. No, it's not my pastor. It's not, you know, it's what is the truth. Because the Bible says the road to perdition is broad and it's easy. It will slide right there. You know, that's why I still, you know, every time I think of Las Vegas and all of those places, I can't think of why would you go there? 
Why would you vacation over there? I mean, that's crazy. Don't you understand the warfare that is flooding in that place? I hope that those of you who went there, you know, after you've gotten the, down there, get cleansed by the blood of Jesus, get freed, because that sticks to you. That, you know, occupies your mind. Amen. Do you understand this? I don't know. I'm just crazy, right? In the form of a servant, he beguiled Adam and Eve, the parents of the human race. Sorry. So in response, what did God do? He pronounced a prophetic judgment on Lucifer and the woman. You know, you saw that. We, we studied that in Exodus to uh, uh, Sinai to Zion. So here, uh, we look, look at the, looking at Genesis 3, 14 to 15. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed. So the serpent's cursed. Evidently before, I mean, he could stand and he could talk. Now he's mute and he could just crawl in the dust. Uh, you are cursed more than all cattle. And you shall eat dust all the days. I'm hungry too of your life. And I, but I, you know, you don't care, right? And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall. So this is the war. But it did not start here. This was the result of a real war that happened uh, before uh, Genesis. All right. So why is the devil so fixed on destroying the position of the man of God? Let me just give you a little glimpse, but we will pursue this, continue this next week. Remember in uh, Genesis 1, 26, 28. Can you imagine God preparing everything? And when he said, and, and, and God saw that all is good. I mean, it is really good. Everything that God created was good. It was, it was marred. It was destroyed. It was cursed after the sin. And look here. Uh, take, can you imagine this? The created beings of God, the angels, the angelic people. I mean, they were so jealous of you. The devil hates you because God gave everything to you that he wanted that he desired, that he was coveting, that he was rebelling against. And I really believe he was coming against uh, 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 Jesus, really. Not God, because he can't, you know, but Jesus. But Jesus countered all of that. And next week, I mean, you know, I hope I could, you know, teach on that. Whatever, whatever the devil was hating, Jesus uh, was doing, you know, to rebel against God. I mean, uh, Jesus restored jesus really overcame it really destroyed that you know uh, expression in the atmosphere and can you imagine this is what god did i mean he saw this man he had a vision of this man that he wanted to have so god created man look in his own image you should park here you should really meditate what what why why i mean i'm sure lucifer was going why are you overreacting here? Why are you doing this? Why, why all of a sudden in your image and in your life, can you imagine? I mean, this, this, this people, this man that he's creating is really uh, a, a very different creature for all of his creation because this creature, this man, this, this human, you know, uh, uh, human being that he's creating is the only creature that can really communicate, can really just appreciate God, can can be with God and is loved by God and is uh, pl planned to be the family of God. Uh, just, just so incredible. And the mind, I mean, the mind of Lucifer and all the angelic being was just going crazy. They don't understand, why would you do that? So he hated God and his hate is released towards this man. And I can just imagine, you know, he, he, image of God, likeness of God, whatever is internally in God, whatever is in the character of God is in this man. And that's why, uh, what did he do? I have my little notes here. I mean, this, this is, you know, male and female, he created them. 
not male and male, neither female, female, male and female, Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, not Eve and Evelyn, it's Adam and Eve, the distinction is so clear right there. But just just over here, I mean, I don't know about you, but, you know, I continue to study here. I continue to do this because I continue to understand. Want to understand, God, show me, show me, show me why you're doing this. And really, the only answer is just because I love you. I want you. That's why you understand the 43 <laughs> scriptures that I keep posting in there. Because I want to be your God. You have no idea what that means. The, the wealth of that, the power of that, the majesty of God, the encompass. I mean, you know, compassing greatness of that. And that you may be my people. I will continually, I will totally protect you. I will totally be with you. Oh, yes, you will go through some of this hardship. Oh, yes, you will go through some of this testing. But that's only to refine you and allow you to, give, to, to, to have my glory. Next. So verse 28. Not only that. And God blessed them. I mean, we're so used to this word blessed. But you know, the power of that word blessed, is, it's really powerful. One day, maybe we'll teach on it. And God blessed them and said to them in the Hebrew, when, when they give you a blessing, I mean, that is meaning God is already there with you. When I bless you, God's with you. All, all that is in God is in you. That's when you're blessed. And said to them, be fruitful. That's, that's us. Multiply. Expand. Fill the earth. Subdue it. Have authority over it using all its vast resources in the service of God and man and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living creature that moves upon the earth. I mean, um, what is the relevance of all this in our study of the anointing and the Antichrist spirit? And I said here, I mean, it's not in your notes, a lot. So because in the beginning, there was a before. <laughs> Uh, there is a before, and we will look into that, you know, next week. Everything God created was good, meaning suitable, pleasant, and approved. Before, he created heaven and earth. In the beginning, that's what he did, created heaven and earth. And so that was already there. But then we, be, we began to see that then uh, the earth, the earth, I believe it is the earth where, where Satan and his cohorts were plunged into. And so... Uh, it was without form, empty, and darkness was very deep, all right? So the spirit hovers, and God spoke, and God divided uh, the light and the darkness. So let, let me just give you a little bit of a, and I will put this in the notes next week. God created man in his image, likeness, with complete authority over everything. God entrusted this man. He has this intelligent you know relationship with this man that he would entrust to this man the naming of all of his creatures you notice that i mean you know all the bugs that we know for bugs i mean all these bugs he named it and yet he was given a mate that came from himself eve came into his very being is part of him that's how that relationship is so close. I mean, we'll talk about that next week. So, so you notice that both enjoy the company of God daily. They enjoy the fullness of his presence daily, his provisions daily, his authority daily. God created was God created man to commune with him, separated for his purpose. We were created solely, first of all, completely, and only for the purpose of God. That's why he's jealous when we give ourselves to things. So we get cursed when we enter into idolatry. Because we adulterate, we fornicate. 
with the things of the world. And we got cursed. And, and, and just, uh, okay, now bring me to the first sin. Define pride and, and we'll end. The first sin is pride and this was the sin of uh, Lucifer or Satan. And that pride uh, caused rebellion and all other sin. Uh, so first sin is not murder or adultery. It's really pride. All right. So we define pride. What is that? What is pride? Pride. In, and can you imagine the, the, the other guys are using this as their flag, right? In the theological sense, pride is defined as an excessive love of one's own excellence. Very narcissistic. As a deadly sin, pride is believed to generate other sins and further immoral behavior and is countered by the heavenly virtue of humility. That's why we're to walk humble for God. And, and this is the root of all. And, and really that pride, I mean, the devil is thinking he's better than God, that he can do better than God. And that's what he, you know, he tries to, and that is going to be in, 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 in our, you know, in the end times, uh, it's going to be man. You continue right now. I mean, everybody was thinking they're all, always entitled that they can do this, the, you know, uh, Yes, you have uh, the freedom of speech, and, and that speech is <laughs> uh, just used the wrong way. So now let's take a look. Where did this come from? So why is Satan so fixed on destroying the position of man, the man of God? Why is, you know, I mean, recently we just saw a lot of man of God that we really respect and, and so on and so forth, whose life we saw as excellent and as, you know, uh, a blessing. And then all of a sudden we just get all of this, you know, they fell into sin and all that and so on and so forth. Why is, you know, the devil hating the man of God? And like I say, you know, the more you are close to God, the more the attack is going to be fierce for you. But you know better because he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. Your abiding will protect you. Abide in the shelter of the Most High God, where no foe in the Amplified Version can withstand. That's, yeah, he will attack you even there, but the presence of God will, will enclose you, will cover you, and will wall over you to protect you. Next, Jeremy. Yeah, let's go to, a, yeah, and, and really here, we'll just end here. Um, this is the narrative of, you know, talking about uh, uh, the devil falling. Son of man, take up a lamentation over the king of Tyre and say to them, Thus says the Lord, and are the full measure and pattern of exactness, giving the finishing touch to all that constitutes completeness, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. This is the description of, of the devil, all right? Next. I mean, it's really beautiful. Hey, you were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. I mean, wow, this guy's excellent. The carnelian, topaz, jasper, chrysolite, uh, beryl, onyx, sapphire. Uh, all of this beautiful, you know, jewel was on him uh, on the day that you were created. Okay, next. Uh, you were the anointed cherub uh, that covers with overwhelm, overshadowing wings. And I said you so. You know, this is how he created. He's, he's anointed. That's why now he's countering the anointing. His is having an instead of a substitute of the anointing. Uh, and I set you up. You were upon the holy mountain of God. Once upon a time you were there. You, you come into the presence of God. You walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire like the paved work of gleaming sapphire stone upon which the God of Israel walked on Mount Sinai. You know, you were blameless in your ways from the day you were created until iniquity and guilt were found in you. Through the abundance of your commerce. Another word for commerce is trading. And you know what? You'll be surprised that the word trading and commerce also means uh, gossiping, backbiting, telling bad words upon people, upon other people. You know, through the abundance of your commerce, you were filled with lawlessness. The Antichrist is going to be called the man of lawlessness. In other words, disregard of the law, disregard of the authority and violence and you sinned therefore I cast you out as a profane thing from the mountain of God and the guardian cherub drove you out of the midst of the stones of fire next is 
that the end? Uh, your heart was proud there, here. And this is, you know, we can't go there. And that's why a lot of deliverance we need, a lot of, you know, humility, a lot of really submitting ourselves to the holiness of the Holy Spirit so that that holiness uh, builds us up and strengthens us and frees us from the unholy things that are still in us. Your heart was proud and lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I lay you before kings that they might gaze at you. You have profaned your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities and the enormity of your guilt, by the unrighteousness of your trade. Therefore, I have brought forth a fire from your midst. It has consumed you, and I have reduced you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who looked at you. Yeah. I mean, this, this was his condition, and this is what happened to him. And he wants this to happen to us. The hell is not for man. It's not for any human being. Hell is for the devil and his cohorts. But he wants to invite as many as he could invite, as many as he could lure to go with him. And that's the lure and the seduction of sin. And, you know, um, today you will find out that um, uh, a lot of what is wrong is perceived as right and what is right is perceived as wrong. And it will become so much more. And that's why even we experience this fight. Even if we're not sinning intentionally, the effect of that in the world affects us. Do you guys understand? And that's why it is so important to just allow ourselves to really be led by the Spirit of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. And as we stand in that place of sonship, we inherit all the, the authority and, and the, the power that is within us through being son of God. Amen. So uh, look at the, all of those privileges. And because, uh, you know, I, I, I was praying because a lot of people during my days, um, they taught on Antichrist spirit and so on and so forth. And... Uh, the problem was they focused so much more on the Antichrist spirit and forgot to enhance and let, you know, the congregation understand, first of all, our dependence on the Holy Spirit. And, you know, we're not afraid of the Antichrist spirit once we are under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Once we're loving the truth and once we're loving what God said, once we're loving, you know, the whole, uh, once we're loving God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, loving our neighbor as we as a demonstration of God's love let's understand that and that's why you know uh, um, you know don't don't think that when we when we do this kind of shifts that uh, don't think it's scolding don't think that you're wrong it's just that there's so much more and yes there's still something wrong in us that need need for us we need to be freed from from all of those entrapment and all of this teaching all of the things that we're doing is hopefully going to embolden us and strengthen us and I see it in all of us in all of you you have it I hear it in your praying I hear it in your postings I hear it but there's so much more and um, I don't want to deprive you of the so much more of God. I know there's so much more for me because there's so much more for all of us. The message we carry is not an ordinary message and yet it is entrusted to us. So let's stand with me. Father, we thank you for today. I really, I, I trust your word that all things work together for the good of them that loves you and are called according to your purpose. Oh, I just, to end, really, I just want to share, you know, uh, Sister Regina gave me an example. Sister Regina has been, all this time, don't want to do any posting, don't want to do anything. It's, Pastor, I cannot do that. I, I don't know how to do that. It's hard for me to do that. But, you know, I mean, we kept at her, helping her, encourage her, and Sister Lilita does the, you know, being an advocate there. Come on, come on, come on. And finally, she did. 
and and look 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 she's she's writing do you guys see that so that's just you know what what we're preaching there is that immeasurable great power that is within her and and the, the, the what, what it did i mean it inspired me it encouraged me and i'm sure it's encouraging all of you who's every day you know, when you, every day you see her posting her prayers in there and can you imagine the supply of strength for that the inspiration that that releases to all of us and to whoever will uh, be, uh, be will be reading all of those posts going forward and so we cannot minimize what God has already entrusted in us. Thank you for the surpassing greatness of your power in us. You paid the price for this. And thank you that today I pray that there will be a penetration of understanding, a light enlightenment in us. That Lord God, we will so value what you already have done for us. That you paid the price of your very life so that we may not just for ourselves but this investment in us is for others as well let your gifts in us individually be operative be activated and let everyone we touch and we encounter profit because of our lives and our lives father we thank you for this and we pray that those of you who will watch this uh a video will be blessed and that you know I pray that you you come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ you ask him to come into your life ask him to forgive your sin and ask him uh, uh, that you, you, you make him your Lord and your Savior and I pray that your life will be changed that your life will have a revolution and that you will see rightly and you see uh, godly and you see uh, the benefits of what God has already done on the cross and the power of His blood in Jesus' name. And now let us be blessed. Let us release blessing upon you. Let the face of God shine upon you, lifting up His countenance on you, giving you peace and giving you grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Is where I lay it down. Every burden, every crown This is my surrender This is my surrender Thank you.
us, Lord. We just thank you for today, God, that we may continue to just room, God, your spirit to really overflow us, to overtake us, consume us, God. That whatever opposition and temptation we face, God, that we are protected and that we are founded in you, God, founded in your Holy Spirit, that no matter what trials or tribulations come our way, we may not fall into temptation, not fall into doubt, but we may fall into the arms of our Father.